Today I will review 3, 4 and 4.5 horsepower Johnson and the Vinrude. But before I go any further I would like to invite you to use the subtitles and if necessary you can choose automatic translation to your desired language. I also want to thank those of you who have subscribed to the Boat Motors channel and invite those of you who haven't to do so. Special thanks to those of you who support my channel. I believe that the video will be interesting not only for beginners, but also for those of you with experience and will help you get to learn something new. The outboard motor you see is two cylinders two stroke manufactured in 1983. This is the last updated model before the production is discontinued. For those of you who don't know, I want to mention that the first motor appears on the market way back in 1948. It was first sold under the Avinrud brand and later as Johnson with a modified look. In 1952 OMC present updated version of the 3 horsepower named Lightwind. The motor is offered with short and long folding shaft. The elegant and compact design had gravity fit gas tank and angled weedless drive. The motor is equipped with sliding throttle, which makes it difficult to control. The lack of neutral and reverse gear requires certain skills, because is permanently on gear. When the motor starts the boat will move. If it is necessary to go back, the motor must be rotated on 180 degrees. Often carburetor adjustment is a standard procedure for motors from this era. The lower knob controls the main jet needle and the top one controls the idle speed. By adjusting the main jet, altitude fuel air differences can be compensated. It is mainly made of aluminum alloys and without fuel, the outboard weighs 30 pounds or 14 kilograms. In 1968 the design of the outboard motor is changed. The new motor is also offered with short and long folding shaft and it will receive fiberglass engine cover and the weighs is 36 pounds or 16 kilograms. The external difference between a Vinrude and Johnson is only in the engine cover and the decals. The horsepower remains 3, but the engine gets a new flywheel, a new type of starter, new throttle control and the innovative vacuum fuel pump. The internal gas tank is replaced with an external one. The magneto will remain as original with internal coils, points, and condensers for each cylinder. The motor is sold with two different drives, weedless which I already mentioned, and standard. Controlling the outboard will remain difficult as the previous model. In 1969, the motor will receive one more horsepower and will become four horsepower. Updated model will be in production up to 1978, and in that year it will receive a new carburetor with a fixed man jet. This will end the need for air fuel adjustment when attitude is changed. In 1979, another outboard with 4 horsepower will appear on the market. This is very rear model and the main difference is the new recoil starter located over the engine, and the internal gas tank. In 1980 the last updated model, with 4.5 horsepower is offered at the stores, with long and short shaft. The new design had different engine cover, with better air flow for the carburetor. The engine is with new base, and is coming from the previous models, and is updated with new flywheel CDI ignition, external coils and will receive new fixed man jet carburetor. Some outboard motors have an internal gas tank and a connector for an external one. They have a complicated on and off fuel valve system, attached to the choke. The models with external gas tank are without this on and off system. Both models now feature forward, neutral, and reverse gear. The hand throttle control allows the motor to be controlled easily and safely. As we can expect, the motor is heavier than the previous models, and the short shaft weighs 54 pounds or almost 25 kilograms. This updated model remained in production until 1983 when it would come off the assembly line forever to make room for newer motors. After we got familiar with the different models, I want to mention the most problematic spots of these outboards. The weak spot on early 3 horsepower models are the high voltage ignition coils. They are coated for insulation with a resin that cracks over the time. 
If you test it and it has a spark it won't last long because the coil will short out and will burn. In the later models, this problem is solved with different materials that can handle better the weather and heat. 3 and 4 horsepower models require periodic point adjustment. It's generally not hard to do it and the parts are relatively cheap. The recoil starter on 3 horsepower model is located on top of the gas tank. It is recommended to replace the pull rope before it breaks. If this happens you will have to replace the spring as well because it will break too. This can happen in later models despite differences in the starter. The 4 and 4.5 horsepower has different starting system which engage the flywheel from underneath. The sound it makes when the rope is pulled is unique. This is due to the small gear being accelerated to moves the flywheel. The parts for this recoil starter are expensive, and sometimes the owners are giving up to fix it, and begin to use the emergency flywheel starter shown on the video. The same starter will remain to the end of the production in 1983. The latest model with 4.5 horsepower is with CDI ignition as I already mentioned. This motor shares ignition parts with other models. It is practically maintenance free until the moment when the CDI unit quit working. Also, very rarely, one of the external high voltage coils can burn out and the motor will lose power. In general, the parts of the new models are more expensive, especially the CDI unit, which can stop working suddenly without any warnings. In conclusion, these motors are manufactured for 35 years with many modifications. Today these outboards are relevant and can often be found on the lakes pushing a boat. Parts are available and the low selling price makes this motor very convenient for beginners and for people without ambitions for high speeds. This is the reason why I made this video, so that I can help most of you. As you know, repairing outboard motors is expensive and sometimes exceeds the value of the motor, so more and more people are repairing the motors themselves. If you follow the link from the top right corner or from the video description you will find a video on how to fix your 3 and 4 horsepower motors. I have made two versions, one is a speed up video to save you time and the other is a normal speed with explanations. You can find links in the description of this video. You will not only find how to clean and rebuild the carburetor, but you can see how to check the motor for spark, how to do compression test, how to replace the fuel pump, how to install new impeller and gear oil change. You will also see how to increase the power of the 4 horsepower model. I hope I was thorough and you enjoyed the video. From now on, you will be able to fix your outboard with confidence. I want to invite those of you who haven't subscribed to the Boat Motors channel yet to do so. Thank you for watching the video.